Hi, in this video, we're going to be focusing on a skill that we'll be using for a long time to come, and that's adding positive and negative integers. Uh, so we really, really need to be able to be comfortable with this as we move forward in math. So make sure you watch this video, and if you don't get it, watch it until you get it. All right, cool, let's start. So I'm going to go over three methods in order to add integers. All of them have their strengths, and some of them have some weaknesses, but all of them definitely have some strengths. All right, so we did focus on the number line before. So that's method one that we'll use is the number line. And I think this is extremely important to be able to understand the number line method because this is really the bread and butter of what makes adding and subtracting integers um, what it is. All right, you'll see. All right, so in this case, we are being asked to add negative 5 plus 3. All right, so on our number line, we would have, all right, let's make the number line the way that you're used to making it, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, on and on and on we go. All right, we may not need all these numbers, but I'm just kind of trying to fill the space here. One, two, three, four, and it goes on and on, but we don't need all those numbers. All right, in order to add using the number line, you start off with one of the numbers that you have. So I like to make it easy and consistent. So I usually start with the first number. That's not actually a rule. You could start with any number, but I start with the first. So I start off with negative 5 in this case. And the addition tells you to move. It tells you how far to move, and it tells you what direction to move. So if it has a positive number, so if you're adding a positive integer, you move to the right. And if you're adding a negative integer, you move, and I'm going to make the arrow go to the left too so you can visualize it that way as well. You move to the left. So in this case, we are adding a positive integer. We're adding 3, which is positive. So that means we're going to move to the right. So we're going to move to the right three places. So we jump 1, 2, and 3. And we end up here at negative 2. And that's our answer. And that's method one for adding and subtracting, or sorry, just adding uh, in integers. We'll look at subtracting in another video. But for now, let's look at another method. And this is a method I like to call my money method. Um, and I love the money method because I think in terms of money, as I'm sure many of you do, like if you have money, you know how much money you have. And if somebody owns, owes you money, you know they owe you money. And if you owe someone money, it kind of bothers, well, for me, it bothers me. So I think of it like that. So in the money method, method two, I think of everything that is positive as money that I have. I think of everything that's positive as money that I have. And I think of everything that is negative hmm, as money that I owe to someone. All right, so in the example, negative five plus three, the positive is money that I have. So I have $3 but I owe someone $5. So that's kind of a bummer, right? I have three, but I owe five, meaning even if I pay everything that I have, I still owe money. How much would I still owe? Exactly, I would still owe $2, which means that in this method, I can see that the answer is negative two. If I owe $2, it's the same as saying, negative two. All right, but you may be wondering, well, these are baby numbers, but I am not going to always have to deal with baby numbers. I have to deal with big numbers. So method three gives you tools that you need in order to deal with bigger numbers. Um, a few rules that might help you in the process. So take a look. Okay, so in this example, 
It would be a real pain to have to draw this number line all the way out to negative 54 and then go back um, to the left, 28 spaces. That would be super annoying. Possible, but annoying. It would be less annoying to talk about money because, well, you know, if you owe $54 and you owe $28 to someone else, you owe a whole lot of money. So you kind of can figure it out from that one. But just in case you are not as focused on money as I sometimes am, um, here is another way, another method to help you. All right, so we can focus on the signs and there are two rules that we use uh, based on the signs. So if you are adding two numbers with the same sign, what you need to do is add the absolute values of the numbers. And then make sure you save the sign. So in this case, we're adding two negative numbers. Um, the numbers are negative. Don't get rid of that negative. At the end, you just plop that negative right back on. So preserve the sign. So you may recall in another video when I spoke about absolute value, absolute value is a number's distance from zero. So the absolute value of negative 54 is just 54. And the absolute value of negative 28 is just 28. And we're, my 8 looks funny. Okay, and we're just adding those values there. And so when we add those values, we get 82. But what did I say? We need to preserve the sign. So the answer is negative 82. All right. So that's if we have the same sign. But obviously, we won't always have the same sign. Sometimes we'll have different signs. So let's look at the rule for different signs. Okay, so when looking at different signs, uh, think of adding a negative as subtracting. So adding a, ne a negative is the same thing as subtracting. And in this particular case, it is, uh, think of the, the commutative property, and I'll tell you how in a second. All right. So remember in the commutative property, uh, we were told we can add in whatever order we feel like we want to add. We can move things around in the expression. So we could actually take these and switch places. Yes, it feels like we're breaking a rule, but we're absolutely not breaking a rule. We're just using the commutative property. So we have here 38 minus 17. Now that looks pretty much like a very, very easy subtraction question, and our answer is 21. And I know what you're wondering next. You're probably wondering, how about if I'm adding a number, um, a negative number? So I'm going to shove this into this corner, just one more example to make sure you feel comfortable by the end of the